In these next two videos, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to take apart and then rebuild your 4150 style carburetor. Carburetor in question that we have in front of us is an E85 carburetor, specifically a Proform 750 E85 carburetor. This is the race series version, so as you guys can see, there is no choke horn on the primary side of the carburetor. This, this is all open with radius entry venturis. It really doesn't matter if it's a Proform or a Holly or a cheap Chinese knockoff. The disassembly process and the reassembly process is more or less the same with minute differences and I'm going to be going over that as I'm taking apart this Proform carburetor. So the first thing that I like to do when I take these apart is I like to take off the fuel bowls because they seem to be the easiest to do and everybody kind of knows how that kind of works. So on the newer Proform carburetors, the size of the bolt is going to be quarter inch. You guys might recognize that size because that size is the same size as a regular nut driver or impact driver. It's the same quarter inch size hex socket. So it's the same size that clips onto here this is a quarter inch, but if you remove this, this is also quarter inch. So you can literally just slip it on, put it over the bolt, and start running the bolt out if you needed to. Older carburetors use a 516 spit. Demons use a quarter inch Allen bolt. And even older carburetors than that use a flathead screwdriver in order to remove these bolts. So as I've stated, this is a quarter inch. So we're gonna be using the quarter inch with the extension driver and we're gonna go ahead and pop off these fuel bowls. Typically, you should be taking these off and putting them back on with just regular hand pressure. You shouldn't need an impact driver to remove these or to install them. Although I do commit that sin when I am tuning up on the fly because I do like to use the impact to run them out and I'll use the impact to seat them slightly and then I'll run them in the rest of the way with the nut driver. You never want to tighten these with any kind of impact. You might think you have control of it, but it only takes one slip of the finger and bye-bye, there goes your thread. So I've already loosened all four bolts and then we can remove the primary meeting block and the primary fuel bolt at the same time. We're gonna set aside the body real quick and I'm gonna go through a few things pertaining to the bolt itself. There's a few things you wanna watch out for. The first thing is that when you pull these bolts out, you're gonna notice that there is a gasket on here. The older carburetors have a paper gasket, the newer carburetors have a black plastic gasket, and some other carburetors like this one has a clear plastic gasket, or nylon specifically. These work very well, and actually the paper ones work well too. The only problem is that people tend to over torque these gaskets because they think there's a leak. If you've already torqued it enough as it is, and it's still not sealing, go ahead and pull that gasket off and throw it away, put a new one on, and try it again. If you guys try to over torque these gaskets, same thing, you're gonna strip out the threads. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these out of the fuel bowl because we're going to be washing all the individual pieces. So sometimes these gaskets are going to get stuck on the head of the bowl. Sometimes they're going to get stuck on the seat of the fuel bowl. And then sometimes they'll pull off with the threads and they'll be right here in the middle. Be careful when you're reassembling your carburetor that you don't accidentally stack two gaskets on top of each other. If you have one gasket that's stuck to the fuel bowl and the other gasket sits on top of it as you're tightening it down, you're not gonna get a good seal and it's probably going to leak. So now that we've got the screws off, we're gonna remove the accelerator pump diaphragm housing, which is this guy right here. So we're gonna go ahead and use a number two Phillips to remove these four bolts. In some carburetors, these are actually Torx and in older carburetors, they're flathead. So keep in mind that they might not always be Phillips, but if you take it apart and it's not Phillips, it doesn't hurt to put Phillips back in because it's a lot easier to service. So let's go ahead and pull these four bolts out. There's no gasket under these bolts. The only gasket that you're going to see is the one between the diaphragm cover or the accelerator pump cover, however you guys want to call it. There is no other gasket that belongs in here. So we've got our cover off, good to go. We're gonna set that off to the side. And then we've got our diaphragm, our accelerator pump diaphragm. We're going to go ahead and pull this off, and you're going to see that there is a spring here. We're going to pull the spring out, and you're going to see that there's this little orange check valve. This guy, you could almost always check it by just trying to lift it up and tug on it. If it still has elasticity, it's probably still good, so you guys can go ahead and leave it alone. A lot of times, what'll happen is you'll get crud, like if fuel dries up in here, you're gonna get varnish inside of this chamber, and this varnish is gonna get in between the check valve and the fuel bowl, and that's gonna prevent a good seal, so when you go to pump your accelerator pump, it's just gonna shoot the fuel back into the bowl. If you have a fuel bowl with glass light plugs like this carburetor does, when you go to squeeze this diaphragm, it's actually gonna 
shoot bubbles up here and you're gonna be able to see it. The next thing you wanna check inside this cavity is this passage that goes over here. This hole right here leads into this cavity straight through. So what happens is you're going to have fuel inside of your fuel bowl. It's going to bypass this check valve when the diaphragm tries to open because of the spring. You're going to push up on that diaphragm and because the check valve has pressure up against it, the check valve's not gonna let fuel go through. And the only way it can go through is out this way. And then that's how you get fuel out through here. These Proform carburetors actually have two fuel inlets, one for the driver's side and one for the passenger side. You can see I've already have one fuel inlet completely removed. We're gonna go ahead and remove this one just to make sure there's no junk in it. This plug might be a little tight, so have a little bit of patience and be careful when you're actually unscrewing this. A lot of other carburetors might not have the dual fuel inlets and that's okay. It doesn't make a carburetor better or worse, but having the ability to swap back and forth or feed both sides at the same time is a neat option that these race series carburetors have. Once you have the plug for the fuel inlet removed, you can go ahead and look inside and you should have a straight shot to the needle and seat. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and remove this needle and seat. Typically the needle and seat should be a 5 8 I really haven't seen anything else used besides that. So as you're unscrewing this, you're gonna run out of threads. And as you're pulling the needle and seat out, you're gonna wanna be careful because there's an O-ring right here. We're gonna go over that O-ring in another video, but what I do wanna show you is that the needle and seat here are covered in varnish because of the E85. I mentioned that this is an E85 carburetor. E85 is a dirty fuel in a sense that if you let it dry up, it will get crusty and it can block your ports. So whenever you're not using it, it's a good idea to take it apart, clean it, put it back together, and don't put any fuel in it until you're ready to run it again. If you're planning to use a carburetor all year round, you don't really need to worry about that. This is only if you're planning to let the car sit for an extended amount of time. So once you have the needle and seat out, the top screw actually unscrews fairly easily. This Proform has the ability to run a Phillips, but some carburetors only have the ability to run a flathead. So keep an eye out for that. Lucky we have a Phillips here. We can go ahead and remove that. I'm gonna point out that this Proform carburetor gives you nylon gaskets underneath the set screw, as well as the needle and seat, which I believe this is an alcohol only thing or an alcohol E85 thing. I'm gonna have to double check my gasoline carburetor, but it's always nice to see the nylon gasket instead of the paper ones. If you check on the top of the needle and seat, you're gonna be able to see a number on this particular one, the number is 130, so this is a 0 0.130 inch needle and seat. The one on standard gasoline carburetors tends to be a 110, and on older factory carburetors, I've seen 100. The higher the number, the larger the orifice is down the middle, and that will allow more fuel to bypass the needle every time it goes open. The larger it is, the more volume that goes through here, so it does become a little bit harder to control the fuel if you don't have a good fuel pressure regulator. If your regulator is not up to par, then what's gonna happen is that your needle is gonna try to close it, but the fuel pressure coming in will overpower the needle, and the needle won't be able to stay closed. The next thing you're gonna wanna look at is the condition of this O-ring. If it's flat, then it's completely not good. If you're running E85 or alcohol, it's going to require a different type of O-ring because standard rubber O-rings are going to get eaten up. If it's regular gasoline, you can run a regular rubber O-ring. But the upgraded O-rings are still recommended, especially if you're in a state like me that runs their gasoline on E10 instead of the standard uh, 91, 87, and 89 octane. You're gonna notice here that the needle of the needle and seat is actually stainless. So when you get your rebuild kit, if you have a stainless needle and your new kit does not have a stainless needle, I would recommend holding onto the needle and seat that has a stainless needle. Most needle and seats that I've seen, you could actually just replace the O-ring and then put them back in a service and they're gonna run perfectly fine. Very rare do I find a needle and seat that has been used that couldn't be reused again. So a lot of the problems with carburetors that need to be rebuilt are the needle and seats. So simply just pulling them out, replacing the O-ring, cleaning off the seat part of the needle and seat, and making sure there's no junk in the way will solve pretty much 90% of your problems if you have a carburetor that's flooding. Moving on to the float, we're actually not going to be removing the float because we really don't need to. You just need to make sure that you have proper operation. You wanna make sure that your spring, which is actually right here, you wanna make sure your spring is still in there and that you have both bolts here and that it moves freely top to bottom. 
This particular carburetor has a notch flow and these are for jet extension. If you are planning to run jet extensions, you must have a notch flow. If you are not planning to run jet extensions, then it doesn't matter. What you do need to keep in mind is that if your carburetor currently has a brass flow, which means that this is actually like a gold color, try to find a replacement where you can actually install these nitrofill floats because they are a much better option compared to the brass floats. Not just in regular day-to-day -day driving, but also if you decide to go boosted, the nitrofill floats will handle the boost a lot better than the brass floats. That covers the disassembly of the primary fuel bowl. I'm gonna go ahead and take apart the secondary fuel bowl and we'll pick it up from there. Moving on to the metering block, this gold thing that you see here is not standard. This will not come when you order your own carburetor. This is actually a boost activated power valve. This is because my carburetor is set up to run a turbocharger. So when you guys order your own carburetor, it's going to have one of these, which is a standard vacuum operated power valve. And this power valve operates off a of vacuum. So when vacuum drops a certain amount, the valve's going to open. When the valve opens, it's going to bypass fuel into your main circuit and then supplement that main circuit so that way you don't lean out on a hill or when you're trying to take off. The only thing I wanted to show you is that there are different types of power valves. So let's go ahead and pull off this power valve so I can show you what's inside. Under the power valve, you have the power valve channel restrictors, which are right here and right here. The Proform Race Series carburetors have these passages drilled and tapped so you can pull the passages out and swap them for interchangeable jets so that way when you swap the carburetor or you make a change you can either go larger or smaller on the power valve restrictor channels and that will change how much fuel is added under load. If you guys notice up here you see another set of holes and those holes I actually drilled myself and the reason for that is because my carburetor again is turbocharged and so I need the added amount of fuel when under boost and so that's what these passages are for. In a separate video I'll go through these individual passages but for right now you just need to know that you should have two passages right here and I'll show you guys how to clean those in the second part of the video. On the opposite side of the metering block you have your set of jets. A big flathead screwdriver should be able to pull those off or you could use a jet removal tool, which I do have, but I do not have here because I was tuning a carburetor out on the dyno and I left my tool over there, so I don't have it right now. I don't like to use the screwdrivers because you could mess up the jets, but for the sake of the video, I will risk it for you guys. So I went ahead and pulled off the jets. These ones just happen to be size 74 jets. And inside, you really can't see anything because it's too dark. But that is a good thing because there really shouldn't be anything in here in this passage. The last thing we're gonna go ahead and remove are the screws on the sides. And these are your idle mixture screws. These are what determines how rich or how lean your carburetor runs at idle. Inside of here, you're gonna notice two things. Number one, that this screw actually has a point to it. And the second thing is that there is a gasket here. So it looks like these Proform carburetors have this like clear plastic gasket. Some carburetors have a cork gasket and other carburetors have a black plastic gasket. You just have to figure out which one you're using and then when you put it back together, you use the same one that you pulled out. This gasket came out with the mixture screw but I'm gonna go ahead and pull the other mixture screw without pulling this gasket. And I'll show you guys how to pull that gasket out if it didn't come with the screw. So the gasket is still stuck in the metering block and you're trying to get it back out and the mixture screw already came out. You're gonna take the mixture screw, put it back in. You're gonna thread it in about two or three turns and then you're gonna yank on it. And that should allow the seal to come out with the mixture screws all in one piece. A lot of times you can actually just reuse them after you clean the carburetor but if they're crumbling and coming apart, you might as well put new ones. You're gonna notice that I pulled off these gaskets. These gaskets will come in different colors, black, red, blue, these pink color. These pink ones are actually a higher flowing version of the standard gaskets. I'm not sure if Proform are the only manufacturers of these gaskets, but these ones are, have been on and off this carburetor probably 20 times and they haven't stuck and they haven't ripped. So. One set that you guys can buy will probably last you the life of the carburetor. You guys probably won't be going through it as much as I will, but I love these gaskets. These things are great. Another difference between the Proform gasket and a standard gasket is that when you use the standard gasket, you're going to see that you have some areas here that are left exposed on the metering block. And you, when you run the Proform gasket, because it's cut out in a circle, it actually leaves just enough room 
for the power valve and not much else. 